right on. It's a beautiful day. It's a rainy week, so um, which is really good for the soil. It's been very dry, and now the sun is sort of peeking through. But I think it's going to rain again later. There's a fresh pack of snows just on those peaks there, covered with some clouds. So I, I guess during this Q and A, the, the view is going to change quite a bit, which might be nice. Well, I'm living here full time now and I'm, I'm planning to live here for uh, a few years and that what the future brings I don't know. I'm, st I'm still a nomad so um, for me it's very much a project of, of building and, and renovating this place and you know so I'll be here definitely the coming years and I don't plan to sell it. I think I'd buy this for life you know because I love this place and I think I'll keep loving it. It's the same with my apartment in Amsterdam, which I bought when I was 27, uh, 11 years ago. When I arrived there, it had so much charm. It was a very old apartment, like there was an old guy living there. And uh, I love that place and I think I'll keep it, you know. Because a house becomes a home over time, only over time, only when you build memories somewhere. So, um, yeah, I think it will be beautiful here too, to have a place where you build up memories and then it becomes a home. But you know, in the future, I don't know, I don't look far ahead. Uh, this is a project for me for the coming two, three years, maybe longer, I don't know, we'll see. So the plan is, uh, there are going to be two individual cabins, like I'm, I'm working on the, the small one right now. And I want them to be individual cabins because they're both big enough to uh, be complete houses, sort of, for one or two persons, you know. So one I could rent out or one could be a studio or a working place and then the other one I could live. So I think it's flexible when, they're both ha when they both have bedrooms and bathrooms. I have three brothers. I grew up in a family with four boys. Uh, we grew up in the south of the Netherlands. Uh, my father is a minister in the Dutch Protestant church. Uh, but was a later part of his career. He was a landscaper when we were children. And uh, he had a nursery in, in the garden. We had, a, we had a big garden and we always worked there as children. It was, a, it was a great place to grow up and I have very good memories to that. And uh, my oldest brother, Kejan, is a carpenter. So I call him often for asking how to do things. Um, second brother, Anna, he's a landscaper too. And uh, yeah, I got the chainsaw from him. And then my youngest brother, Sibren, is a videographer and animator. And my mother was the caretaker and the technical and financial manager of the house. When some, something has to be fixed, she's probably that person. That's my father, that's my mother, my youngest brother, Sibren, with his girlfriend at the time, my oldest brother, Kejan, with his wife, Tineke, and that daughter, Jerosen, and that's Anna. And he has a child too, but this is a bit of an older photo, with his uh, spouse, Marika. Yes, I always have very good memories to my family. I don't see them very often, but I mean, thanks to smartphones and WhatsApp, it's, it's, it's so easy to be in contact and I see them a few times a year. There is no toilet yet. Um, I'm going to build an outhouse and obviously there will be a toilet in the cabin. I'm not sure if it's going to be a septic system or a composting toilet. I'm, like a septic system is a lot of work and I haven't figured it out yet how to build that on a slope. With all the houses here, I mean nobody lives here full time but they're all holiday houses and they usually have their own septic system. Um, but how to build it is quite complicated. Everything I find about it is on flat land and so the, the how do you call that, the, the leach field is is quite different, I think, than when you were on a slope. So, 
But it is a good solution here because there is a lot of water. We live in the mountains, so there's a lot of circulation. The water just comes straight from the mountain. So I think in a place where there's a lot of water, it, it, it makes sense to have a septic system. And, you know, and then the houses are, they've been there for more than 100 years. And they're going to be there for quite a few more. Um, so it makes sense to have running water through the toilet. Uh, composting is, is very common nowadays, but I think it's something more for more temporary solutions like, like tiny houses or... Um, I don't know yet. I have to figure it out. Most of what I do, I, I've learned myself. I'm a graphic designer, that's what I've studied and that's what most of my career has been. Uh, I've worked in design firms and later freelanced. But I've always loved building, you know, and um, so I, I educate myself. I, I just read a lot and just try it out, just start working and, and figure it out. And uh, sometimes I ask my brother and I ask other people how to do things and I'll just figure it out. Um, I think we live in an amazing time, you know, when everything is online and uh, you can Google everything and, and YouTube. Because I remember when I worked at a design firm, it was about 12 years ago, I was a junior designer and I wanted to learn more about 3D visualizing, which would really benefit the, com the company because we need a lot of visuals and we had no one at the company who was able to do that. So I wanted to learn that. So I asked the creative director, but she said, yeah, yeah, it would be a great idea, but right now there's no opportunity, there's no budget for it or something. So I, I didn't learn it. It was all before the YouTube time. And now when I want to learn something like software, for example, SketchUp, I'm drawing up the houses in all of the detail in SketchUp. And I just learned that through YouTube which is amazing, you, know, you don't need a school anymore and, uh, and it's all for free, you just need to spend some time on it and just start, start doing it, you know. And with, with building, with carpentry, with plumbing, all the things I'm doing right now, you just look it up on YouTube and you have to study. And not just watch one video, watch several videos, you know, and with car painting it's different in different countries and you have to read the comments too because usually the a lot of craftsmen are in the comments who actually know how to do things um, you know there's a lot of people making videos like me who are not professionals and they tell they show you how to do things which is not always the proper way so i read the comments i, I watch other videos and that's how you learn a lot of things I got a trail cam recently and I've put it up here on the path and on the first night I captured, the first shot was a, a rabbit and the second shot was, was a small wolf walking by. Uh, I've also captured a wolf, no, a, a fox I mean and um, yeah I'm, I'm putting it up there. I should check it, I think it's, it's still running right now. Um, I mean, we're living in Europe, so Europe is very much domesticated, so there's no bears. There's bears in Romania, and I think they're also coming in the Alps now. Uh, but there's not so much wildlife here. There's deer I've seen here, there's uh, chamois, um, badgers, you know, foxes. Um, that's basically it. There's not much here, and I haven't seen much yet. Like uh, the first time I was here, I saw a deer, but um, you know, the more people that come here, which is not so much, the less wildlife there will be. There's, um, during the week there's, there's almost nobody, I see nobody here, but during the weekend I see more hikers. And uh, when it's getting summer there will be more people in the mountains. But the wolves, that's, those keep me awake sometimes. Uh, just really now and then when I hear them because I, I hear them howl and that's that's amazing so there's wolves here and those are amazing so I'm hoping to see one in real life yesterday night I think I saw one but it could have been a fox too because I was going outside and I had my headlamp on and then you see the eyes and it was walking it was it stopped and it looked at me 
and then it moved on again. So it might have, I think it was a fox because they're less shy. Wolves don't come close to humans. The, the one time that I captured a wolf was at around 3 a.m. You know, that's when most people are asleep. And I've got here two times. It was around that time. And the foxes are here more often. They come closer to, uh, to humans. The wolves are usually over there in that village or around that area. That's where I hear them. Uh, and higher up on the mountains where there's, there's less people. Well. I don't know, I think it's a set of life events that led me to here. I talk about this in my book in the preface of two years on a bike. Because I think my bike journeys influenced it. You know, during my bike journeys I figured out living in nature. Uh, that, that was, the, I think, the beautiful part of these two journeys from Amsterdam to Singapore and, uh, and the Americas. Um, you know, I love the silence, I love being alone, uh, I love nature. But I've always lived in cities, you know, during my 20s I lived in Amsterdam and I have lived for a short period in Singapore and in New York and in Barcelona and, and cities were always exciting to me. As a graphic designer, I love just art and the creative, meeting people, going out, you know, but as I get got older in my 30s I just longed to be more in nature so I'm very glad I made this decision to to have a place here in this beautiful part of nature um, and I don't miss the city at all you know sometimes I go to the city and um, yeah then it's nice I mean I, the city will always be interesting so I go there from time to time but then for a day or two it's it's enough Hmm. I have a very simple setup. A DSLR on the tripod, which is filming right now. It's a Sony A7 III. And I have a drone. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, the drone is a Mavic Air 2S. I recently upgraded. I had uh, like chapter 1 to 7 of this series shot with Sony A7S II and a Mavic Air, which I also had for my bike journeys. And uh, yeah, they're all, all great cameras. And cameras nowadays are just amazing, you know. It's the, the pixel quality is just so good. Um, you know, it's up to us to make beautiful films with it. You know, so um, it's a very simple setup that works for me. The camera is always with me. So I'm, I'm very much used to just put it there and turn it on. When I'm working, I, I forget. I immediately forget that it's on. Um, so it, it feels very natural. Um, and it captures a lot of footage, you know. And I have a fast workflow. I, uh, I don't back up. I throw everything away. So because there's so much content I shoot, it's constantly recording. And then when I edit, after I've made the edit, I, I back up the edit, of course, the final video and the rest of everything I throw away. So, so that's how that goes. The drone shots, I get questions about that. Uh, flying a drone when driving a car or riding a bicycle is something I should not recommend doing. But I prepare the shot, right? So I fly up the drone while I'm parked. I frame the shot and I think what I want to do. And um, I just have to hold the throttle, but I don't look at the screen so I can focus on the driving. Um, and usually a shot never takes longer than 15 or 20 seconds, the longest shot. So when I have to really actually fly the drone, I don't drive, you know. And I know the roads very well here and there's no traffic. So that's very important too. Um, but still, uh, yeah, you should be careful. No, not really. I don't think isolated is the right word. I mean, it's more sort of liberated. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful to be here. I don't feel alone because I like to be alone. 
and um, also because I'm we're so connected through internet and I'm, I have my phone with me I have internet here so it's easy to stay in touch so and I enjoy being on my own I think that's just different type of people you know most people are very social they like to live together uh, and there's some people that stray from the herd right I think it's always good to be alone and I think you can also train it to enjoy being alone uh, I think it's good to go for uh, to spend some time in nature on your own because it's beautiful you know and if you if you like to be with people you it's it's also then nice to come back to your family or to your partner or to the people you are living with um, but yeah it's, it is it, it works for me sometimes as friends here with dogs and I'd love to have a dog here I think it would be amazing but I also love to be free and I love to travel and, have, uh, and to be independent like I've, I've been most of my life um, so and then a dog is is more difficult so I'm not sure about it maybe cats are easier but I'm a little bit allergic to cats so if I get too close to them uh, you know it's not good, but I'll, cats are easier to maintain. If I go for groceries, the cats will be fine here. Um, about animals, I'd like to have sheep here or some goats. I mean, that would be amazing. And chicken, I think it would be amazing. Uh, I think it's something for the future because now I'm really focused on, on building. I'm doing a little bit of gardening. I don't, and the landscaping is also part of the building here now so i'm more focused on that and having also animals is just the building is going to be too slow so um, it, it might be something for the future but i'd love to have like some goats there's beautiful goats here in in the valley so and it's also quite common to borrow cows or or goats for the summer for example so you don't have to care for them and, and, and work with them the whole year round so it might be interesting to do it as a seasonal thing but um, I have a lot of land you know like I have a meadow down there so I could keep I could keep animals also here on the property to keep the grass short and it would be fun to have some animals around There's a tower on top of the hill of a provider uh, called Tim. Um, my Dutch phone doesn't connect with it, but I, I bought a SIM card. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's good, but the last weeks it's been very slow. It, like the, it took me more than 24 hours to upload a video, so uh, it doesn't always work really well. Um, when I walk to the top of the hill, my international phone works too because it connects with the valley. But it's a slow, slow connection. Um, I'm thinking of getting like something like Starlink, so you have satellite internet, but it's expensive. Uh, but it will be good for uploading videos and just staying connected. You know, it it becomes increasingly easier. The coming years, it it will be easy to have internet anywhere on the planet. I mean, that's where we're going. So it becomes easier to live off grid and still function, still be connected and, and even work remotely from anywhere, which is, I think, amazing. Let's see at the comments. There were so many questions. Um, I cannot answer all of them, of course. Do you ever have days when you do absolutely nothing? Just relax through wire. Uh, no, I always work, um, sometimes more than ever, than other times. Uh, I like to work, I like to research things, I like to do things, but I enjoy the silence and the quietness too, you know. Um, I, uh, I have coffees and lunch here with this view, uh, so I, I think it's a good balance. I'm, I'm, I work in a very beautiful place, so then it's nice to, to work. Uh, Please talk about the local flora, types of trees, plants, flowers. Um, I'm learning about all of these things, but um, the forests here, 
are beech and birch mostly and chestnut but there's not much chestnut on this side of the mountain um, there's larch as well but not so much there's not so much pine here and spruce like on the other side there's uh, there's a there's a large forest pine yeah i think you have to go higher up or in some other valleys you have more pine forests so that's um that's what there is here uh, it's mostly uh birch here on the property uh, which is beautiful i think and it's good for uh, uh mushrooms <laughs> that's the word um, there's a lot of mushrooms here, so in, in autumn, I remember when I came here in October, there was a lot of people with baskets also on the property looking for, um, looking for edible mushrooms because they grow under the birch trees. Short term renovation plans. Yeah, I can talk about that. So I'm working on the cabin, the crane is finished, I'm working on the small cabin and the roof is the first thing. But I have to wait for the building permit because the, the geometra forgot to ask about it. Which, I mean, maybe it was my fault because I didn't ask too many times. Like here you have to, if you're working with people, you have to ask multiple times to start working because, yeah, sometimes it's slow. So I have to wait for that, but it might come very soon. And... Um, I'm also waiting for the roof window. I ordered it, I have to pick up some wood. I'm waiting for a few things and I wanna have everything prepared before I start on the roof. And first I thought I could do the roof whilst the inner cabin is in there. But because I need to do the roof light, I need to work from the inside and also for the chimney, uh, the, the building needs to be empty. So the inner cabin is gonna go over there and I will live in there for the coming months whilst I'm working on the house. So I have to first build the inner cabin there and the outdoor, the, the outhouse I'm gonna build too. So I think it's gonna take a, another two or three weeks or maybe a month, month before I start working on the cabin. Uh, the work on the cabin is gonna be a slow process because I want to do everything right, you know, because I realize when you're working on a property like this and you're learning all these kind of things is that a lot of jobs you do twice because I'm living here too. For example, the solar panels, I did a quick job putting them up um, because I need to have electricity from day one and now I learned that the, the angle needs to change especially for winter for now it's fine so i have to kind of rebuild it tweak it you know and that's worth a lot of things also with the outdoor shower and thinking oh, i'm not sure if i like it how it is now so uh, you change a few things and um, the outdoor shower the inner cabin it's not so important because it's temporary but everything on the cabins needs to be done right you know and i i because it's it's preserving a, a historical building everything i'm adding to it i want it to be fitting so i i'm looking for antique stuff uh, doors for example and furniture and and fittings they need to be curated right you know i need to select all these things and it takes time to find the right things is the ghost town for sale um yes and no so in that ghost town over there, there's one, one property for sale, which is three small cabins, but they're just too small to do something with it. One of them is a ruin. Um, to buy an entire ghost town is very difficult because every house has different owners. That's just how it goes. There were people living there 50 years ago or 100 years ago, and of course there were different owners. There's, not, there's never a ghost town owned by one person. Uh, it's very difficult to obtain some properties because people inherited it, you know, and they might live somewhere else. They might be part of the family, might live in the United States, and they have to make a decision together to sell it. And sometimes there's a dispute in the family about it, so it's very hard to get all the properties. Uh, I know that because one... Uh, I've been on a property like Gash in, in, uh, in the Osola Valley, he got a complete ghost town and um, 
almost complete. I think he's still trying to buy one or two houses. But he grew up in the area and he's Italian, he speaks the language and he knows the area and the neighborhood and the people in the community very well. So it makes it already a lot easier. Um, but yeah, all of these houses here, there's a lot of them are for sale and are on the website, like a website called Idealista. And other houses might be for sale, but you have to just ask the owners, you know. So if you like this area, if you, or if you like a certain area in the Alps and you want to buy something, I think the best way is just to go there. Spend some time there and get to know the area and ask around. If you see a, an old ruin or an old house where nobody lives and you think like, oh, I'd love to, love to buy this, but there's no sign. You, you can figure out who the owners are and they might they might be willing to sell it. Why don't you sell your videos to Netflix? Um, well, thanks for the compliment, but I think... Uh, no, I like YouTube. The reason why I started to do YouTube is because I wanted to learn uh, from the community and create a community uh, to get to know local people here in the mountains and also to just learn from the community like by sharing the project and to get recommendations and IDs. So YouTube is I think is amazing because of the comment section and I don't respond much because it's just too much. I get like a thousand comments on every video right now because uh, and it's just too much but I read everything or almost everything I, I try to uh, catch up on it. Um, and I appreciate that, you know, because I think there's, uh, I love reading other people's stories and reflections on, on what they see and the ideas they have for the property. And, uh, and there's very often that people know better how to do things than I do. So I learn from that too. So I think, I think it's amazing uh, how connected we are. So keep it coming. I appreciate it. <laughs>